Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we'll figure this out one of these days, or maybe not. Who knows? Hey, Dr. Kyle Loveless here with uh, Dr. Lonnie Bagwell. Uh, he's up in Huntersville, North Charlotte area, with uh, True Health uh, Center, and um, in South Park and Matthews in the Charlotte area uh, with Queen City Health Center. And uh, Dr. Lonnie and I have been good buddies for a long time. We've practiced uh, very similar. We do a lot together. Um, we've trained together. We've uh, gotten educated together. Been to tons of seminars together. And um, yeah, we just really think alike in, in, in this idea of how health really comes from the inside out, not from the outside in. And um, our whole purpose really of doing these uh, weekly uh, videos is to help people become their own health expert. That You start to understand the body. We're going to talk about sciatic nerve issues and back pain today and really, really zeroing in on the sciatic nerve. And uh, as you can see, I got this nice little um, human butt right next to my head uh, with <laughs> sciatic nerves coming out of it. So you could, so I could point to it when we're talking about the nerve. But um, yeah, we, we just wanted to teach you guys really what health is, how your body's made to work, and truly you become your own health expert. Uh, and that way, when people teach you about health and, and they tell you, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that, especially in the world we live in today where people are telling you, you have to wear a mask or you have to get this injection or you have to um, do this test or whatever it is, that you actually understand health. So you can say, yeah, that's a good idea. Or no, that doesn't really line up with what health actually is and what the philosophy of health is. So Dr. Lonnie, will you real quick, before we dive into the sciatic nerve issue, just give us the definition of health so people can actually understand what health actually is. Um, if we went to Dorland's Medical Dictionary, 1936, I, 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 kinda, <laughs> I, I like that one because I like that definition because it's been around since organized medicine. We have this perception that organized medicine has been around for hundreds of years and it's so validated or whatever, but uh, Dorland's Medical Dictionary 1936 says that health is 100% function of every tissue cell, organ, and gland in the body 100% of the time, comma, not just the absence of disease or infirmary. So broken down in modern English, it tells you it's not symptoms that you've experienced. It's not a label that you've been given, um, but it's proper optimal function from above down inside out. I mean, that's how we, how we teach it here in the office. And I think that's as good a definition as any. Yeah. Health is the F word. It's how well your body's functioning, right? And so if, and then if we know health is how well your body's functioning, then everything we do needs to go back to that, that definition in terms of does this add health to your body? Does this allow your body to function better or does it take away your body's ability to function? And so when we talk about sciatic nerve issues, um, you know, the, the main thing that most people will do is, is, you know, they have start having some back pain. Maybe they don't have any back pain at all. Maybe it just starts with pain in the, in the kind of SI joint hips. Maybe it starts in the right in the butt area, in the glute area. Maybe it's going down the back of your legs. And maybe it starts at your feet and works its way up. You know, sometimes that happens. Um, either way, you can see right here, this sciatic nerve, this one big yellow nerve is what we're talking about today. And you can see where it starts. It starts right at that L4, L5, S1 nerve root right in this area. And it's a bunch of nerves that come together to make one really big nerve that goes down the back of your leg. And if that nerve is irritated, whether it's from infl inflammation or if it's actual pressure from a disc, pressure from uh, a vertebrae or bone, uh, then you will feel it. It's like a lightning bolt down your leg. Um, I know I personally have had sciatic nerve issues. Actually, the, when I first started in chiropractic back when I was 16 years old, I had back pain and sciatic nerve pain. And man, it, it literally paralyzes your leg. It is miserable. Every so often, if, um, you know, from, I, I do a lot of driving, so we, I'm in the South Park office, I live in Indian Trail, so it's about 45 minute drive. And so from all this sitting, every so often, I'll feel that into my right butt cheek, that sciatic nerve issue, and I have to really work to change that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's very painful, and it can be debilitating for a lot of people. I've had patients walking completely bent over, I know you have too, completely bent over, and uh, not barely been able to walk. And, and we're able to get them at least walking out the door that day and, and see good change with it. So Dr. Lai, tell me about um, what do the medical uh, approach, so if somebody has sciatic nerve pain, they go to their doctor, what's gonna happen most, most of the time? Yeah, well, first of all, this, and the reason why I even wanted to talk about this this week was based, we were talking about ear infections. And so the first thing that we have to do is like kind of, like you walk into the medical office, you say I have back pain, you know, that, that goes into my glute or goes into my leg in any way. And it, and I feel like, and I'm not, I, I know that there's amazing doctors out there and, and that do better, ask better questions and get better answers. I'm not saying that there aren't, but statistically from what we've seen through the door, the high majority of people who come into the office with pre-diagnosed sciatica from the medical office, it, it isn't sciatica the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. 
there may be issues with sciatic nerve. There may be other things going on, but, but it's like, as soon as someone walks in and just has pain in the region that looks like, you know, it could be Pretty sciatica. Anything in their leg, right? <laughs> it's sciatica. Yeah. And then, and then the, the reason why they end up in our office so frequently is because, you know, if, if they were given some kind of hope, I believe that they wouldn't come into our office, but I think that they're not given a whole lot of hope and they're just given, you know, muscle relaxers and anti-inflammatories. I mean, that's the, that's the absolute number, number one thing that we hear, you know, and uh, have experienced personally. And so they're given these, you know, and, and they never have addressed the issue or the cause or how it got there. They don't talk about their ergonomics. They don't talk about the trauma that they had. They don't talk about the stress that they're under, even emotional stress. They don't talk about all the components that add up to the pathophysiology of that symptom that they're experiencing. They're just given the outside in medication to try to address those symptoms. Then if it persisted, this again, my personal experience with I don't know, thousands of these cases coming through the door over the last 15 years. Then if it persists, they might recommend some physical therapy to address the soft tissue. Um, and, but again, at this point, we still haven't asked the better questions. We still haven't gotten to the calls and we still haven't affected any of the structure, which is ultimately the, the very, at, at literally and figuratively at the root of the issue, at the root of the sciatic nerve, we have the structure, um, which should be looked at first if we're logically approaching how the body actually works and, you know, working our way from the inside out. And so, um, so it's, and that's where the frustration comes in. And frankly, um, the top refers to our office for sciatic issues are medical offices by mm -hmm. keep continually doing this process and the medications never having addressed the issue. And then they show up. Yeah. And I've even gone into, um, uh, urgent cares and talked to them there and then they get really frustrated too, because the same people are coming back. Um, over and over again with the same problems. And it's just here, here's the medication. There's nothing you can do. And then, you know, the medications, a lot of times that leads to opioid addictions. And we know opioid addictions can lead to heroin uh, abuse and addiction and, and all kinds of major problems there. So um, this is a big deal. The number one reason, actually, I think of number, I'm sorry, I looked it up. Number two reason people go to the doctors for back pain. Uh, that's that's the number one thing is it's because we live such a sedentary lifestyle. So when you're sitting all day long, I mean, you can see that's right where the sacrum and, and the lumbar spine meet, that literally will create tons of inflammation in that area. And a lot of people will, you know, I've always had that scenario where somebody comes in and said, you know, I, I'm fine. I've always been really healthy. It's just one day I picked up a pen or picked something up and my back went out. Well, I'll tell you that that wasn't like one day they picked up a pen, their back went out. That was years of stress developing in their low back to where the disc uh, had, had pushed against the ligaments that surround that disc so much that eventually those ligaments tore and they tore and they tore until eventually they tore enough to him for that person to herniate their disc and they get that shooting sciatic nerve pain. So typically, like you said, the biomechanics or the structure, typically it's when the vertebrae in your lower back either aren't moving properly, they lock up and subluxate and that can create irritation, inflammation and create stress on the sciatic nerve or they, um, they actually will, will uh, they can actually the herniate, the disc can actually bulge or herniate, which can at the same time create inflammation and stress on that sciatic nerve. So it can be a disc issue. It can also be just an actual joint issue where the spine isn't moving and that irritates the nervous system. A lot of times when people come in, they've been to a physical therapist and they do a lot of, they call piriformis syndrome, which I'm not, to be honest, I'm not a really big fan of that diagnosis because um, a piriformis doesn't just get tight, stay tight for no reason. There's a structure, like you said, around that. And, and if, the, if the spine's moving perfectly, then the muscles are going to be fine unless you tear a muscle. And in, in that case, that's an acute injury, which heals over time. But if it's a chronic issue, the muscles don't just chronically bulk up for no reason. They do that according to stress. And it's typically when the biomechanics off because the structure's off. So if your pelvis isn't moving properly, if one pelvis is rotated forward and the other one's rotated backwards, that's right where your piriformis is. It's the constantly stretching one side of that piriformis and it gets little micro tears, builds trigger points and knots up. And now you have inflammation in that area. So just addressing the piriformis might make it feel better for a short period of time, but it will always come back because the problem was you had a pelvic instability or pelvic biomechanic issue. So it can be a pelvic issue. It can be a sacral issue. It can be a, um, a, uh, a lumbar issue at the same time. So right. they go to the doctor, they, they get medications or whatnot. And I see that's not a good idea, not a good approach. Eventually, it's the they number kinda... one. It's go the ahead, number one failed attempt. I mean, it, uh, it, like as far as how it's treated outside of our office, it's the number yeah. one failure that we see in our, you know, our unofficial true health statistics. You know, it's like it, 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 it almost feels like if anybody ever gets diagnosed with sciatica outside of our office, they're going to at some point end up in the office. Yeah, you know, I think it's like, even eighty percent going to a chiropractor, eighty percent of chance of going away. 
Uh, I think it's less than like 40%. And, and I think even the statistics yeah. on surgery uh, for the people that went to an orthopedic first versus chiropractic first, the percentage of how many people went under surgery was astronomical compared right. to the percentage that went under surgery um, that went to a chiropractor first. So this is kind of like what people see chiropractic as. I, you know, I don't really love that because it's so much more than that. And only 9% of the nerves in our body are actually for pain. But this is kind of like what people see chiropractic for. It's, it's good for back pain. It's good for sciatic nerve issues. And because that's what people can feel and they can see an immediate response, you know, like if you're not digesting food well, it might take a month before your digestive system heals itself up after you get adjusted or same with, with not sleeping better. But when it comes to the sciatic nerve issues, I mean, I've had people walk in and walk out, you know, one day they're, they're miserable. The next day they're fine just from one adjustment. Well, so, and to, to your point, it's, it's rare for someone to ever walk in with just low back issues or sciatic issues and not also have uh, things like uh, prostate issues, male organ dysfunction, um, female organ dysfunction, hormone imbalances. And we're talking like e and when he says male organ, we're talking like ED. That's people don't realize right. that. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. yeah. And uh, or people can't digest food or they're not going to the bathroom at every three days. And the reason why is again, just to paint the image of to your point is that, um, you know, when we're talking about this is a nerve and that nerve, if it's interfered with at the level of the actual spine, so if we're talking about this right here, I hope you can see this, but the nerves come out of the side of the spine, become the big, it's kind of like these nerves come out the side and then become the big sciatic nerve. Mm -hmm. And so, but so if we're having issues at this level, then it's not only impacting the pain that people are experiencing going into their buttocks or down their leg, into their feet potentially, but it's also could be impacting the, at the nerve root, those nerves that go to the vital organ. So there's a ridiculously high correlation to people having um, multiple lower half of the body issues at the same time that trace back to nerve root interference as being the cause of the sciatica and also the cause of some of their other organic dysfunction that they're experiencing. So, um, so I love it. I mean, when people come in, I mean, I hate that they're getting the medical merry go round run around, but I love it when they come in with these issues because I start immediately saying, yeah, yeah. Okay. We can help you with that. But what else do we have going on here? You know, we start lining up the goals, you know, that we're going to tackle and everybody's blown away when they come in in that first visit and we're setting goals with their, you know, with their body actually functioning better versus just getting out of pain. So yeah, lifestyle goals, yeah, like being able to work out again and all that. Yeah, exactly. I think that, and, and I don't want to get away from this too much because here, like to your point too. So I had a mentor teach me about how they had to teach a word um, to, to an orthopedist one time. And the word was sclerotogenous and I don't want to get too technical, but what it means is, is it just, it's, it's pain that radiates from ligaments as opposed to sciatic pain is, uh, is neuropathic, meaning it's actual nerve pain. And so, um, so the, big, the biggest thing that I see is, is that when people come in, the reason why the conservative treatment through a lot of the medical approach didn't work was because they were working on sciatic problems, when in reality, the patient was actually experiencing sclerotogenous or ligament problems at the joint next to where the sciatic nerve is, which is the SI joint. This is my yeah. personal story. I mean, I thought I had sciatica and nothing, you know, no stretching or anything like that was really causing any correction. Um, and then I found out actually it's the ligament. So bringing the model back up here, it's actually the ligament that goes around the ilia where it attaches to the sacrum, that SI joint right there has that ligament. And that thing is so innervated with pain fibers and it's so painful. It literally will make you bend sideways, you know, and, and many people who have low back pain have had that point where something gets flared up and literally it looks like their upper half doesn't match their lower half. They're like stuff, you know, sideways, we call it antalgic. And so um, the, the, as always, the purpose of these videos is to get people to ask better questions. And I think the, the first most important thing is that you start trying to figure out what the actual problem is because the majority of the time, I don't think it's sciatica, the majority of the time it's SI joint issues. And as soon as they come in and we start addressing those specifically, we look like the sciatic heroes when in reality, it's, it's a parallel discussion with ear infections. It's like, it was never really an infection. It was positive pressure that was created in the eustachian tube. And we did the adjustment, it relaxed the muscle and it drained. And we looked like we beat an infection. Mm -hmm. But the reality is we didn't. We removed the interference, helped the body balance itself back out, the ear drained, same thing here. We identified that it's actually SI joint issues. We start to balance out the sacrum, it goes away. And we look like sciatic experts when in reality, I've dealt with this 10 to one in the office over actual sciatic issues. Yeah, um, I think that's that's one of the one of the approaches that we take is and at least we do it. There's there's a lot of approaches you can take, but we use this take the um, SOT blocks. They're they're different wedges that you have people lay on on their pelvis. It's it's to level the pelvis out and get pressure off those pelvic joint or SI joints, and um, that's the stuff that gets people moving. I mean, like they'll lay on that for 15 minutes and they walk out of the office and they couldn't even walk in. 
Um, and then if it is an actual disc issue, then we get them on decompression machine or something like that to help recover that disc and go through uh, right. exercises and strengthening program and all that. And that's, that's like that. So then we, we start to adjust, we get the spine moving and that's after evaluating, Hey, is this a sciatic nerve issue, a disc issue or SI joint issue? Um, right. and, and taking x-rays and seeing, is there any degenerative changes there? Any bone spurring, uh, if necessary, MRIs, but you typically don't need an MRI with it. And then from there we say, okay, now let's start to adjust. So then we adjust the spine and that adjustment typically is going to be, um, everything from a blocking technique, to an actual physical adjustment to um, if it's SI joints, I typically know tons of uh, intense uh, pressure drops or anything like that because it opens up too much. So it's just knowing what it is because you can't actually make it worse if you don't know exactly what it is. Yeah, that's right. And as always, we have the same methodology, right? We, we start at the core, work our way out. We trust that the body structure is what it's supposed to be. We just want to get it back to where it goes. We trust that the nervous system works amazingly. We just want to remove the interference. And so we have this inside out approach literally and figuratively you know, where first thing we're going to do is ask better questions, make sure that we're on the right, you know, we're solving the right problem. Uh, then we look at the, the structure because structure does dictate function, both of the nervous system that it can influence as well as the function of the soft tissue itself. When we jump straight to, you know, trying to help the piriformis and trying to help, you know, so as and affect the posterior chain musculature and all that stuff without having affected the structure at best, if it ever works, it's a temporary fix because those muscles are attached to the structure underneath. So if the structure is still in a bad position, the muscle is still going to have to adapt back to that bad structural position. So it gets real frustrating and expensive, both time and money, um, to manage sciatica. It's a very expensive condition to manage. And again, I think just because we're not asking the right questions and, and you know tackling the right problem. Yeah, and especially if it's an acute issue and you get in there and you start working on those muscles and everything else with physical therapy, you're gonna, it's gonna, not only is it not gonna get better, it's gonna start to get worse. That, because that cue, right. you're, you're already taking an inflamed area, you're inflaming it more. Um, and when it really just needs structural correction and movement in that area and getting that in the proper alignment. So yep. yeah, that's huge. And now, so, and now you get that lined up, right? Now you come along and you do some basic stretches and it's like, oh, the stretches that never worked, now they work, mm -hmm. right? That my, my friend that just started doing some stretches at the cubicle, you know, all of a sudden her sciatica went away, but you know, mine doesn't. And so but now we affect the structure, then we move it. And, and by affecting the structure, to be clear, we're also affecting the neurology to the area. Again, just like when we affect the neurology up high and the ear infections get better because it relaxes the muscle, allows for draining. Same thing here. We're actually adjusting the spine, affecting the structure, which is removing interference from the neurology that then can allow for the muscles around that area to become less inflamed and relaxed so that they can more easily respond to what we would do next, which is the soft tissue therapy if necessary. But honestly, if it's SI stuff and you diagnose it in the beginning, we tend not to even have to address that because once yeah. the structure is affected, the muscles tend to balance themselves out. And, uh, you know, and again, it happened. And then people say, oh, my gosh, my sciatica went away so fast. Really, it was never sciatica. Yeah. And all we needed to do was move the interference. Your body could do it all along. Yeah. And then you can start doing, you do home exercises to strengthen your core and strengthen your abs and strengthen all that so that it actually lasts too. And it's not a constant thing you're dealing with all the time. Um, and that, that's, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now, so if we, if we were to list, if I was to say, okay, what are the top five things I would recommend for someone with, let's just bulk all that together, low back, sciatica, SI joint, all that area, although they're different, there are some specific things you can all do, right? So number one, right off the bat, this is something you actually have to show up for, but I would find a chiropractor, find a spinal corrective chiropractor in your area. If you're in Charlotte, you can reach out to True Health Center or Queen City Health Center um, and, and do an evaluation. And that means a full range of motion, uh, uh, seeing how so we evaluate your range of motion, see how well your body moves, evaluate your posture, see what, where the posture malalignments are. So if you have a, a low back issue and we get your spine moving, the pain goes away and we don't fix your structural problem, like the postural issue that was causing it, then you're coming back in six months anyways, or maybe even sooner. So someone that's actually going to work on that too, not just the get rid of the pain part. And then, uh, and then, yeah. And, and then we like to do that weighted scale to see how you're distributing your weight. And then at the same time, uh, doing actually feeling the body, see where the misalignments are, seeing what's moving, what's not moving. And then finally x-rays um, from both views of the low back. So you can actually see what's happening there. And then have a plan in place. I would say your second thing that most people miss is they go to a quick thing, like they go to a quick clinic for a chiropractor, even a massage, or even even like I just went to a place, really cool place called the Stretch Lab. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That place is awesome. I just went there today. I'm actually going to partner up with them and start to do stuff with them. But I got stretched out because I've been working out like crazy. But I got the stretched out thing. But even if you go to a place like that one time, 
you might feel better when you leave there, but they didn't really correct anything. They just stretched you out. Same thing with this. That adjustment helps and it's going to be amazing, but it's not going to be the long-term answer by itself. So you actually have to do other things to make it last. So the, the second thing is have a game plan. If you're just going somewhere willy-nilly, you're going to get willy-nilly results. And I would say that third thing there is have a good home plan. So if you're coming in, you're getting adjusted, we're getting your spine moving, but then you're going home, you're sitting at a computer all day long with your, you know, twisted up and turned and in all awkward positions, head down all the time, and then you're sleeping on your stomach, and then you're, you know, you know what I mean? Like, and, and the, the ergonomics is off, then your home plan is going to actually mess up your chiropractic plan. And it's almost like we're hitting a brick wall, and then we go to a re-exam, we don't see this full change. So you have to have someone that's going to create a good home plan for you as well. Now, those are your top three. And then this, the last two, I would say, actually are, are, aren't necessarily treatments as much as they are uh, what you're putting into your body. How many times have you had people that eat horrible, right? And once they've changed their diet, their back problems inside and, and joint problems went away. Oh, man. I mean, fibromyalgia, obviously one of the classic examples of like just chronic inflammation and pain. Uh, we've seen as much consistently across the board as much as a 50% reduction in symptoms just by getting people hydrated properly and reducing their sugar consumption. I mean, yeah. it's just on the stop it's, feeding the inflammation. My, yeah. I know for me, it wasn't, it wasn't the sciatic nerve issue that went away with diet, but my, my knee pains, I used to have horrible yeah. knee pains after playing soccer for years. And all I did was take bread and grains and sugar and all that out. And my knee pains are gone. I couldn't tell you last time I had knee pain. Um, and so it, it, that's a big one. And so the reason I put that into a plan for someone is if they're getting adjusted and we're doing all the right things, but they're inflaming their bodies, their most problematic area is what they're going to be feeling. That's right. Right. Because it's a yep, stressor. Absolutely. So we got to remove stressors. It's not just about the stress on your back. It's about the stress in your body. And then I would say the final one is, Doc, What? just just give us a list. And it might be one, might be two, three. Of, if you had to say, hey, this is a good supplement. Everybody wants a supplement. So let's give them a supplement. <laughs> I know. It's not the only <laughs> answer, but it can be helpful. What would you say to use? Yeah. Um, I like the ones that have positive side effects. Um, and the two... Look, we don't like to treat a lot of symptoms, but also at the same time, like I love people and I don't like to see people hurting. And so uh, just like our cancer patients, like we have protocols for them to help manage some of their symptoms, right? So that they can be more comfortable while we're helping actually change their cellular environments. So anyway, so same thing here. Uh, turmeric, of course, we love it, but we don't like it in a lot of the forms that are out there off the shelf. You know, we like good quality liquid herbals, preferably so that it's more easily absorbed by the body, uh, more able to go and do what it's supposed to do at a higher concentration. Um, I read something like the equivalent, like like to to match our liquid turmeric. I think it's like you know if you're taking a, a, a teaspoon of our liquid turmeric, you'd need like a hundred pills of, of a powdered turmeric, you know, out of a like basically take a yeah. bottle every day. Let me um, let me say so, something on that before you add to it. Sure, um, yeah. Not to, not to cut you off, but just to add to what you said. So I use the same. We use the same turmeric, and um, I've been taking turmeric for years because I, I do a lot of work in out, and you just get it's impossible not to yeah. get inflammation from that, and. Uh, I, it's just, I could drastically tell the difference when I switched over to the liquid yeah. turmeric from what from what I was taking. I mean, I take it daily now. I love same. It. This stuff's amazing. And the other thing is, and this might seem kind of left field, maybe not. I don't know. It just depends on what your familiarity is with pain management stuff or whatever. But um, but we have a we have not just CBD, but we have a really high we're called ultra CBD. Um, and a little bit about my background, like I have multiple fractures in my spine that I've been working with degenerative changes for uh, more than a couple of decades, right? So that's how I got into chiropractic and um, and same, almost identical to your story, but related more to my thoracic spine and all the fractures that I've been managing for so long. Um, I got to a point where I was doing a lot of things right. And, uh, and all of a sudden, like the chronic inflammation in my joints and the pain started coming back more readily. And so I did exactly what I'm telling you right now. I, I started with turmeric, the liquid turmeric, and then I did the ultra CBD. And I was absolutely blown away. Within a couple of weeks, I had no pain. And I, I remained pain free for six months until I irritated it again. Then I obviously did all the things that we teach on these videos, right? And then, but because it had worked so well the first time, I went back to it right away. Within a week, I was out of pain. It was, I've never seen any combination work better for all different types of pain and yeah. why I like them is because they both address systemic inflammation. So for example, you take that turmeric, it's going to address systemic inflammation, affect your liver. And so now if you're having inflammatory issues elsewhere, you can also see those resolve in addition to managing, you know, maybe the sciatic pain or low back pain in this case. So in I like the ones that have the positive had, side of Whenever you had, uh, whenever you have back pain, you had to come down and see this really good chiropractor. I think it like around South Park area. This is, a shameless, this is a shameless plug. 
for but he hey look he, he's he's <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take away from the fact that you helped me a ton over the years but um but anyway that was a bit shameless <laughs> i mean i mean when you when you, you started need, talking when about you need how good things done right you gotta come down you gotta come down here when you need things done right it's cool, no you know i love no, it. i talk about all the time i'm like because because you know dr holly my wife she'll adjust me but you know how it is with your spouse you kind of get like halfway halfway love <laughs> you're all the way in well, i'm like man i need to go up to huntersville now you're anymore. gonna have to come to huntersville yeah. oh my gosh too funny good stuff but right. uh but anyway yeah no yeah, i love ahead. talking about this stuff because this is something that i mean this this will this will wreck someone's life to your point earlier this will this this is what you just stated the five steps is a fantastic methodology to move away from medications and subsequent mm -hmm potential addictions and, you know, medical management of symptomatology. Like we, we know that that's not, it's not a failing model of approach to this particular issue. It's a failed model and, uh, and, it, and pill, potion, lotion, injection, surgery, or this, that's your choice. And, uh, and I love it when we can step up and do great work for people in this category, um, you know, when they're really out there struggling. So I'm glad we yeah. got a chance to talk about this today. Yeah, and then you can get long-term results with, with you know the the home exercises and the stuff that other stuff in the office. Yeah, ultimate goal, and this is this. I mean, there's chiropractors that'll watch this and fall out of their seat because you're not, you know, they don't want their secret to get out. But ultimately, the goal is for them um, not to come back to us for the next 20 years for the same problems. Yeah, on what I tell patients all the time, like patients come and they don't leave, but they don't. They're not. We're not working on the same stuff. It's because they're working on improving their health and living more well and you know, kind of enhancing their life is why they stay. They don't stay to fix the same stuff. We, this is, we do corrective and rest restorative care, you know, and if we yeah. do that right and we ask better questions in the beginning, we get better results and we can work on that. You actually having high energy and sleeping well and reducing inflammation and digesting better and all those fun things that really people want to work on um, if they can just get past the pain. And I, and I think that I use, I use the, the what we chiropractic, I say it's your, in wellness care, at least like, so not therapeutic, like you're in pain, like you feel great, but you come to a chiropractor anyways. Um, and I call that, that is your, that is what you use to help your body handle the stress of life. And however right. stressed you are is how often you should be coming because it helps your body adapt to the stress of life. I use that chiropractic. I use ashwagandha for that. I use some CBD There's oil billions, for that, buddy. you know, yeah. the, it's, lo it's the a, Lord is your tool bag. It's no secret that stress is coming. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we're in it now and it's coming and it ain't going anywhere. And I think the most stressed out people who have false expectations that their life's not supposed to be stressful. Um, and we need to shift them away from that and that terrible yeah. false expectation and get them to realize, look, the stress is coming. But you at one point were two cells that came together. You're no less a miracle today when you were when those two cells came together to, for, to become you. And uh, we need to see the act congruent with that absolute truth and then come, you know, be congruent physiologically with how the body works and you'll become ridiculously resilient. And then, and ultimately, then we joke around the office or whatever, but we call it fireproof. You become fireproof. And so as life's coming at you, you get better and better and better, become more resilient, more fireproof. And then you leave that legacy to your kids and your grandkids. Um, and you've done something super special more than anything you could leave in a will. Yeah, that's huge. Cool. All right, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Hey, if you want to connect with us, if you want help with your health, go to queencityhealthcenter.com or truehealthcharlotte.com and uh, connect with us. We'd love to help you. If you want any, just a quick question or anything like that, feel free to message either one of us. We're happy to answer. And I uh, hope you got a lot out of this. Please share this and like and love it. Hey, you can literally change someone's life um, by, by getting them thinking differently. And so that's what this, this is all about. So uh, you guys have an awesome day and uh, we'll talk to you next time.